If you don't feel like sleeping tonight, this is a perfect insomnia inducer. The Russian reporter who loved the dead, Anatoly Moskvin, a journalist with a morbid curiosity for the dead, went from an oddity to one of Russia's most depraved criminals when his mask was finally removed. A genius by some standards, Moskvin was a college professor, a master of linguistics who spoke 13 languages. He was also a journalist, focusing on the macabre world of death, and in particular, graveyards, often voluntarily sleeping in a deceased person's coffin the night before. He was tolerated as a bit of a weird, yet harmless fool by most. So when they found 26 mummified little girls in his apartment, the country went into shock. Moskvin has visited cemeteries in the wake of terrorist attacks, targeting predominantly Muslim child corpses, as the authorities would assume it was in retaliation to the attacks by some crazed ultra-nationalists. No one suspected the harmless eccentric. He was caught after a tip-off from neighbors who had seen him painting over one of the corpses of the children. It was found that as well as engaging in necrophilia, Moskvin had been embalming, preserving, and dressing up the dead bodies. Deemed unfit to stand trial, he remains in a mental hospital until this very day. I hope they have good locks. Another creepy and hard to believe true story is the case of Elisa Lam. In 2013, the body of Elisa Lam, a 21-year-old Canadian student, was found in a water tank on the roof of the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. What makes this case particularly eerie is the surveillance video released by the police showing Elisa behaving erratically in the hotel's elevator just before her disappearance. The video shows Elisa pressing multiple buttons, peeking out of the elevator as if she's hiding from someone and making strange hand gestures. Additionally, the manner in which she entered and exited the elevator seemed bizarre. The circumstances surrounding her death and the behavior captured on the video led to widespread speculation and conspiracy theories about what might have happened to her. The case remains unsolved, and the mystery surrounding Elisa Lam's death has led to various theories, including paranormal activity and foul play. The eerie and unexplained nature of the surveillance video has made this case one of the most perplexing and unsettling true stories in recent years. One night in 1973, the two young McDaniel children of Enfield, Illinois, claimed to see a weird creature lurking in their yard and trying to get in the house. But Father Henry McDaniel chalked their creepy story up to the active imagination of childhood. However, he changed his mind later that night. After being awoken by strange scratching sounds, McDaniel grabbed a gun and a flashlight and peered outside his front door. There, between two rose bushes, he saw a creature that was almost like a human body, just as his kids had described. It had three legs on it, a short body, two little short arms, and two pink eyes as big as flashlights, he recounted to a reporter. McDaniel said he fired four shots and was sure he hit the creature at least once, causing it to make a hiss, much like a wildcat's, before it ran off toward a railway embankment. McDaniel was stunned when he saw the monstrous beast jump 80 feet in three jumps before quickly running out of sight. The police found scratches on the door screen as well as footprints in the dirt near McDaniel's home that looked dog-like with six toe pads, yet no clues pointed to an unusual creature. McDaniel's sighting made the reading eagle, but it was clear most people didn't believe it was true. It didn't help that a 10-year-old neighbor faked his own eyewitness account of the beast, only to later admit that his testimony was a prank against the McDaniels. McDaniel reported two more sightings of the alleged beast to local cops, but he said they eventually threatened him with jail time because nobody believed what he saw had been real. But McDaniel was adamant and stood behind his scary true story. If they do find it, McDaniel said in an interview, they will find more than one and they won't be from this planet, I can tell you that. After McDaniel's public testimony about the Enfield monster, other eyewitness claims began to surface. 
Monster hunters swarmed the town, and at least five men were arrested after firing shots in the area and claiming to have photographed the creature. To this day, no explanation has been uncovered for this small-town creepy story.